Yo, what up homies? Tonight I'm fishing with my wife. We're gonna be using cheese. We're gonna be using yabbies. Oh no, I forgot my crayons. Rightio folks, that was a bit of a light-hearted introduction. I'm down here in the Lower Ovens River with my wife Loretta. We're bait fishing for Murray Cod. We're going to be using cheese and I'm going to be using a big yabby to see if I can catch a big cod. Now, there's my yabbies. This is the smallest one. The smallest one would hurt if it bit me. That's the smallest one I've got. And even that's still quite a reasonable size. And this is the biggest one I've got. If I can get it out. If I feel really lucky, I might even put him on the hook later on. Anyway, so I've got yabbies. I'm going to show you how to rig a yabby because a lot of people ask me, can you make a video on how to rig a yabby and how to put the yabby on the hook? I'm going to show you that in that video. Now look at the river. It's very, very low. It is still flowing, but it's not flowing very fast. Last time I was in this spot, I caught like 10 native fish, including two Macquarie perch, and the water was right up high near this bank here. So, folks, the arse has dropped right out of the river. Let's chuck a yabby on a hook and a little bit of cheese and see if we can catch a fish. Let's just get straight to the yabby part. I'm going to show you how to rig a yabby. I'm using, this is my, uh, you've seen this in a few of my videos recently, this is my Murray Cod spinning reel setup. I'm using braid all the way to the hook and sinker. I probably should use a leader, but I'm not. Now I'm using a Pat Noster rig. Just a little quick tip with the Pat Noster rig. If you are using braid, you should use a leader because even though you can't see it, quite often there is a microscopic little opening near the, uh, the eye of the hook that the braided line will pull through and you can end up losing fish without actually breaking your line. Take it from me, I've been there. But this is 50 pound braid, it's quite thick so I shouldn't have any problems. Now the Pat Noster rig, as you've uh, seen me talk about so many times, is a sinker at the bottom and then up the line, you tie a loop into the line and then you just poke the end of the loop through the hook, hook it over the point, pull it all tight. The only difference this time to what I normally do is I've got the, the loop quite a bit higher than the sinker. That's because yabbies, if they can get to the bottom, they'll bury themselves in the mud or hide under a log or a branch. I want my yabby on display. I want him to be out in the open where he can't hide so there's more chance of a fish seeing him. So I've, I've rigged up my Pat Noster rig a little bit higher than normal. Now I'll grab a yabby and put it on. Right, yeah, now I'm starting with this one. This is the smallest one in the bucket. Still quite a big yabby. All you have to do to rig a yabby is you just get your hook and you just poke it through the tail. Fish prefer to eat yabby's tail first. So the claws and everything go in backwards. So they'll, quite often they'll push them around and spin them around and try and get them tail first if they can. So just put the hook through the tail. That yabby will live for hours on that hook. Now, there is a chance, it's currently 6.30 p.m., there is a chance that I can fish with that there for two hours, not get a bite, then take the yabby off and release it back into the river to survive, and it'll live just fine with a hole in its tail. But anyway, folks, that is how you rig a yabby. Just put the hook straight through the tail. I prefer a Pat Noster rig. Everyone's different, but that's what I like. And I'm just going to cast this just out there. Yabby in and ready to rock and roll. Right now with my uh, my cheese setup, it's the same, it's a Pat and Ostrich. I've got the hook down a bit lower like normal. The cheese isn't going to try and bury itself into the mud, so that's okay. I've got a reasonably smallish, biggish hook. I've got no idea what size it is, but it's about that big. And I've got two little squares of mozzarella cheese. Now the whole mozzarella cheese, well the whole cheese thing for Murray Cod, some people say you should never use cheese for Murray Cod because it's really bad. Other people say that's a load of crap, there's no evidence to back that claim. My theory is, it's Christmas time now, there's been people fishing along the river for days, most of them are using cheese for bait, and there's no sign of any dead fish floating around, so I don't know how true that rumour is. But anyway, I've got my two rods in, one with the yabby, one with cheese. Loretta's got her cheese rodding down the end. Now when you're using a yabby, particularly a bigger yabby, or a yabby with braid, one thing you need to be mindful of is that line is going to move a lot, and the end of the rod might even move a bit. 
because the yabby's quite big and strong and he'll kick around and it might look like you're getting a nibble. But believe me, if a decent sized Murray Cod grabs that yabby, it won't just nibble, it'll just go bang. I can see right now my line is moving around all over the shop, it's going tight loose, tight loose. That's what I want to see because that tells me the yabby's moving around and making himself visible to the Murray Cod. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus! Got him! You see that? It's only a really small fish and he almost pulled me bloody right in the river. Look at the size of him! <laughs> he just went bang, 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 bang and I dived for it so that I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't end up in the drink. And look, it's a trout cod about not even 20 centimetres long. <laughs> I wonder out here under this little clay thingy here. It's like I'm wet my hands. There you go, folks. It's a lovely little trout cod caught on cheese. It was an epic bite. It just went bang. And you look at the size of the fish. He's only a, he'd be lucky to be 20 centimetres long. See ya, buddy. Film will release him over the shallow so I can see which way he goes. In case you're wondering why I often say I'm just going to wet my hand, which I did, then I wet my hand and grab the fish. The reason I do that is because fish have slime. We all know fish are slimy. And that protective, that slime is their protective slime. That's like their immune system. And if you touch it with dry hands or any hot surface, you can damage that slime. It's like a weakening of your immune system. And it just leaves them more open to infections. So by protecting that slime, we're giving them a greater chance of uh, avoiding any kind of nasty bugs. You got a monster! Hold your right up! Hold your right up! It's a big fish! It's fighting like a calf. Just be careful. That right, that's not very strong line. I'll grab the fish grips. <laughs> Where are the fish grips? That strong that line's not super strong, so that's a big cod, I think, isn't it? It's a big carp! You got a big carp on cheese. Show my other ones out coming. That's Loretta's uh, Murray cut on cheese, Loretta style. <laughs> it's a dirty great mud marlin. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Drop on his head. Rightio yeah, folks, that's it. I'm filming my closing scene now before it gets any darker. Loretta and I have had a lot of fun. Murray cod fishing with cheese. I've never even caught a Murray cod. We caught a trout cod and we caught a carp. The fishing's been very slow and that's been the case for the last week or so. But anyhow, on a positive note, I did find a spare pair of crayons in the glove box. So I've been able to enjoy myself. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, why not give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and hopefully you'll join me on my next fishing adventure.